Welcome to Tech Topics. My name is Aaron Brodney, and I'm a systems reliability engineer at Nutanix in Durham, North Carolina. And today, I'd like to talk to you about Docker and some of the advantages that it brings. Let's go take a look together. All right, so I've sketched out a couple of diagrams here to try to help better explain what Docker can do for you. On this side here, I have the traditional model, which is based on virtual machines, and this is the model that most admins will be familiar with at this point. We start with hardware, uh, upon which we run a hypervisor, and the standard approach has traditionally been for most applications to have a virtual machine with its own operating system, its own running kernel, and then to have the applications hosted on top of that. And while this works very well for isolation and for security, it doesn't do much for automation, and uh, it wastes a lot of resources in terms of having all of this duplication of effort. So on the other side, we have Docker containers. And this starts with hardware as well, uh, on top of a hypervisor. And rather than run a whole bunch of virtual machines for each application that we'd like to host, we're just going to run a couple of VMs that uh, are running Docker on CentOS Linux. And by doing this, and by leveraging features in Linux, such as control groups and um, namespaces, it's able to host multiple applications on the same virtual machine um, while providing isolation between these layers so that the applications don't interfere or there aren't security concerns. Um, this also includes a lot of um, scripting for uh, developers to help build up these Docker images and for admins to help deploy. So in the end, this saves resources, it saves time, it saves money, and it saves effort on the part of the admins and of the developers. And for that reason, I think it's a win. Uh, I'd like to now show you uh, a little bit more about Docker. Uh, let's kind of have a look at a live demo. All right, and so now we're going to go through a best practice Docker installation so that you can start playing with this on your own. And I'm going through the Docker installation steps in our documentation, which again is uh, linked in this video. So starting at the beginning of the docs, we first want to make sure that we have a kernel that is compatible with Docker. So if we run uname-a, basically what we're looking for is a kernel version greater than 3.10. In this case, we have a version better than that, so we know we're okay to proceed. Um, we've already done updates on this system, so we're not going to worry about that step. However, one thing that we will need to do is to configure the Docker repository. Now, if you look in the instructions, it has uh, some information you can copy-paste, or you can look on here. I've created this file docker.repo in etsy yum.repos.d. For speed, I disabled gpg check, but you'll probably want to leave that on. And by creating this entry in here, we'll be able to source uh, some of the Docker packages that we're going to be using here in just a minute. So the next step would be to go ahead and install the Docker engine. So we're going to run yum install docker-engine. And we'll give it OK to download and install these packages. All right, the next step is to go ahead and start up the Docker uh, daemon itself. So we can do system ctl start docker. And to make sure that we enable Docker at boot, we can also do system ctl enable docker. And now when the system reboots and hits the multi-user target, the Docker service will be started. Now many users will be able to want to use Docker commands without necessarily becoming root all the time. And we can do this by modifying an existing user on the system and adding it to the Docker group. In this case, I'm going to do user mod ag docker for the Docker group against my username, Aaron, A-A-R-O-N. Now if we log in as this user, we went ahead, we're trying to run this Docker image. It's pulled down the image and it's running. Thanks for joining me today to talk about Docker. For some more great information, please check out our portal site in the uh, Docker Solutions Guide. The link will be attached to this video as well. Uh, please tune in and join us for another Tech Topics. Thanks. Mm -hmm.